Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. Good to see you all. I uh, haven't been around for last couple weeks uh, or last uh, two weeks and everything. Uh, <laughs> um, we are experiencing a little buffering already out the gate, but um, oh well. All right, so uh, tonight's class is a little bit different uh, than what we're used to. Um, I have been wanting to uh, design a new kind of keepsake box. One that I think uh, a lot of people would like, you know, uh, and um, uh, one that I can give you all, uh, you know, some files on to, to try to make and everything. And um, uh, the lid of the box, I've already decided, is going to be a kind of a wavy American flag. But then the body of the box, I want it to have some designs and decorations to it. Um, and for some reason, uh, it's, I'm buffering a lot. Let me see what's happening here. Bear with me just a second here. Okay. Give me just one minute. Let's see. All right, well, hopefully, okay, so we're going to try this again. And uh, we're going to see as far as we can get. If it continues to buffer, then we're going to just cancel class and we won't have class until after the beginning of the year. Because uh, this is the last class of the video, the last class of the year. Um, and if we continue to buffer, I don't, I don't know what I can do uh, to fix it. So we'll see what we can get through. Um, all right, anyways, we'll figure it out. And we'll see if uh, YouTube can get their act together or me, one of the two. All right, so as I was saying, um, one of the things that uh, I want to do is I'd like to uh, design a box. A long time ago, I made a small keepsake box for box for myself, and um, I was trying my hand at a few things. All every part of this box—it's a very simple box. Every part of this was carved on the CNC, and um, I never really liked it. Uh, it um, it just gets thrown around and gets you uh, you know used it you know for demonstration purposes and things. I've never really used it, and I thought to myself, you know, I really want to redo this box, but I really want to make it ornate. I want a lot of details and everything on the sides, and I want the lid to be kind of a wavy flag, and um, the goal tonight is to start laying out and designing a new box and everything. Now this particular box is uh, seven inches wide and uh, about 10 inches in length and the box body without the lid stands about two and three quarter inches tall. Um, the, um, body of the box is half inch thick on the walls and I'm going to go a little thicker because 
that's what I want to end up with, but there's going to be some carvings all around this whole thing, this whole box and everything. The legs, the feet, um, I want to change that up. Uh, the body style, I want to change that up and everything, but I want to make a new box. And um, I hope you guys and girls enjoy the ride as you come along with me. Now, if I'm buffering, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what I could do about it. We'll, we'll try our best to get through this. Tonight's class is only going to be about an hour, uh, hour and 15 minutes long. It's not going to be a long three-hour class. And um, we're going to see what we can get done in design in that time. Uh, and this will be part one of, you know, however many parts it takes to complete this box. So I really want this box. I want, uh, I want there to be this box to have some wow factor and uh, there's going to be a combination of 3D carving. There's going to be a combination of V carving. Uh, there's going to be a combination of raised carving and everything, pocket carving and stuff. And um, we'll see what we can do. Now tonight I'm going to be working in both uh, SketchUp to kind of... Um, show you some of the elements of what, I, what I'm thinking that I want to do and everything. And then I'm also going to be working in Vetrica Spire. Uh, and um, because of the 3D model element and everything. Now, for the most part, the things that I am doing, I'm importing a 3D model. I'm not creating a 3D model from scratch. So... Um, I could technically, everything that I'm going to do tonight could technically be done in desktop and pro because uh, I'm working with an existing 3D model for the lid. And um, the, uh, so we'll see uh, what we can do on that. Now, if the, Hey, Roger Brown, a Kool-Aid Roland, Brooks Martin, uh, Rod Walleen, how you doing? Doug Fushi, um, how's everybody doing tonight? Um, Roger S., Dave Krause, what's up, guys and girls? Harvey, Troy, Midnight, Jim. All right, so I got to get back into the uh, swing of things, and uh, YouTube's already pissed me off for the night with the... the, the uh, the uh, uh, buffering, so I'm gonna take a deep breath and uh, we're gonna go at this. I usually have a calm demeanor, but uh, I'm irritated. All right, let's go ahead and see what we can do. Now, let's start off with uh, importing a 3D model into our design and let's switch over to our uh, screen. So, we're going to be on screen number two. And um, let's get my head out of the way. All right. Now, let me see if. Should be okay now that little black screen a uh, little black box on the screen you'll have to forgive it but my lighting has got some shadows somewhere all right mouse pointer let me open that up all right ladies and gentlemen so the uh first off um the box itself is going to consist of the lid and the um, the sides. So we'll start off, I'm gonna draw a rectangle and uh, kind of just uh, lay this out. Let's start off with actually the job setup. 
So we're going to, uh, on this box, I'm actually going to go with a 10 and a half inch uh, wide box. And the um, length of it, um, I want the length of it to be longer than what I had here. This was seven. I'd like, I want this box to have a really nice look to it. And so I want it to kind of have the, a little bit of the, uh, the golden ratio, if you will. And, um, that, uh, 1.618, uh, let's see here. Let's go. I'm going to take my 10.5. Let's see here. All right. Golden. Yeah, 1.618. Okay. I'm going to take my, for my height, I'm going to take my 10.5, my length, and I'm going to divide that um, by that 1.618, and that's going to give me my width uh, and everything. So this box, I want it to have a really nice, pleasant feel to it and everything. So that's going to bring that uh, to about 6 uh, and a half, 6.48. I'm going to go ahead and round that number up to six and a half. And, um, that's going to be, uh, my height on this rectangle. And I'm drawing just kind of right now, I'm drawing a rectangle. That's kind of the outline of my box. Um, but, uh, and for the lid, the lid's going to be three quarters of an inch thick and we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now when I hold the shift key down and I go back into that job dimensions and setup and uh, yeah I lost my green screen. We lost the screen. Now, does everybody see the screen now? <laughs> For some reason, I had lost the screen. Okay. Thanks, Brooks. Thanks, everybody. All right. So, 10 and a half. It's going to be a double-sided job. This job is going to flip over. There's going to be two sides and everything. Um, it's going to be 10 and a half inches by 6 and a half by 3 quarters. And that's going to be the overall dimensions of my lid. And that's what I'm going to kind of start off with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. And with that, I'm going to draw out this box. be the size here now my um, box is going to be mitered on the joiner on the four corners we're gonna miter that and um, I want my walls to be about a half inch thick and so I'm going to offset this rectangle inward. And what I'm trying to do is in a 2D environment, I'm just drawing the, like a plan, the plan out. Um, I'm going to offset inward. I'm going to keep my sharp corners and everything. And what this is going to represent here, uh, this is going to represent uh, what my box walls would look like, the four sides that are glued together. So if I came in here and, uh, you know, connected the corners as if they were the miters, 
and everything. This is gonna be kind of a representation of my box. And that, um, within that half inch uh, thickness, there's gonna be a bunch of carvings all around the sides and everything. But my um, sides, on side one, we're gonna do all the carvings on the layout and everything. But on side two, I'm gonna lay out and do the miters. I'm actually gonna do the miter cuts on the CNC. Uh, I want to do the miter cuts on the CNC uh, for the simple fact that I can control where those miter cuts are happening. Uh, when I, If I take my boards over to my table saw or take them over to my chop saw or what have you, there could be a chance that I cut one a little long or a little short, you know, on one side, on one miter, and it throws the whole design off to the left or the right or, or you know, anything on, on these sides because there's going to be carvings all the way around this box. And I want to be able to do the carvings. My sides, again, my boards are going to be You guys and girls, let me know if you're buffering uh, because it's it's buffering on my screen over here. Um, Okay. All right. So anyway, the um, the lid is going to be the sheet one here, uh, and it's going to be the full setup. Hate starting out like this, guys and girls. Sorry, I gotta. I just gotta shake it off because it's really just. Uh, I'm over it. Um, the uh, technical difficulties are kicking my ass this year. Um, the lid of the box is going to be the 10 and a half by six and a half, but I'm going to have multiple sheets here. I'm going to have sheets for the two sides um, and the front and back. So the on sheet number two, we'll go ahead and make that one of the fronts or the front. We're going to rename this front and on that front I want to go ahead and edit that and it's going to be ten and a half inches long um, but I, I'm gonna give myself some waste because I need to have uh, waste material for my alignment pins for flipping and all of that stuff and I'm gonna be profile cutting all the parts out along with the miter and everything um, the uh, so here my front is going to be the, the actual front piece is gonna be ten and a half inches in length um, we're I'm gonna actually go three inches tall I'm gonna go a little bit taller and so my width here, I want to give myself another, you know, inch and a half, let's say. So um, I'm going to just go 12 inches. By three. And they're going to be my sides are going to be a half inch thick. My uh, size, my, my everything. Now, I could, um, if I didn't have a planer or a drum sander or a bandsaw or whatever the case may be, and all I had the opportunity to do was go buy a board from you know Lowe's or Home Depot and then come back to the shop, I could throw a three quarter inch board on the CNC and I could mill it down to a half inch thick and then cut my parts out and all that stuff. Uh, I'm actually gonna just start with a half inch board. So my boards are already gonna be milled down to a half inch thick 
um, they'll be run through a planer or uh, you know a joiner planer table saw to be cut down and everything and so 12 inches by three by half inch thick and I'm gonna need four of those pieces I'm gonna need two that are uh, 12 inches long and I'm gonna need two that are uh, eight inches long so this will be the uh, front and I'm going to add the back the left side and the right side and sheet one is the top so I'm going to rename that all right so I should have top left right front and back and the bottom of my box uh, the bottom of the box is just going to be a um, eighth inch uh, birch plywood you know uh, it's got a, it finishes off nice and everything so that's what that's gonna be and that's not gonna be part of the CNC so I don't need that in the design here so the front is gonna be 12 uh, the back is gonna be 12 by 3 by half inch so let's edit that Twelve, three, zero point five. Now I'm going to do something here. Um, I'm going to uh, make my left side. Let's edit that. I'm going to add also an inch and a half of waist to that. That's what I'm going to do. I was thinking out loud. Sorry about that. Um, so it's the, the length of the finished part when it's cut out and everything is going to be six and a half inches long. I'm going to add an inch and a half to that. So we'll make that uh, eight inches in length, three inches in height, and also a half inch in thickness. And then the right side, rinse and repeat, is going to be the same thing. So edit that. So we have eight. Three. Zero point five. Now for each of these, I will be touching off on the material surface for every one of those. Uh, I am going to start at the bottom left corner. You can, you know, start wherever you want. I'm going to do the bottom left corner. And um, I'm going to, uh, my model resolution is set to very high. Now, for all the sides, because I'm not, I've decided that I want to do kind of a V-carved, raised type V-carved. I want to create my own vectors and things uh, to for the sides, the ornate de detail on the sides. I don't want to do 3D models. Because I could just drag and drop 3D models in there, and I don't really want to do that. I want to kind of create some, uh, trace some images and, and things like that. Um, but for the top, I am going to import a 3D model. It's one of my team's models, mine of my team's models, uh, and it's an American wavy flag with an eagle. I want the lid to be a wavy flag, and uh, it'll probably have a frame around it of some sort and all, but it's going to be a wavy flag. And so in here, on the top, when I hit the edit button, I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on edit. And it should allow me to have two additional uh, settings here. And I'm going to go extremely high on the resolution, not maximum, just extremely high, because I want the most detail or, or the, uh, I want a very good detail. 
Uh, I don't want any pixelation in my model because that pixelation will translate over to the quality of the finished cut. Um, the, um, so the, I would like to uh, set that lid since it is going to be the only 3D model right now. Uh, I'd like to set that to extremely high and that's going to be that set up for just that one board. Okay. Now this will give me all of my different sheets and there's already some vectors on here. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, but the, uh, the last part besides the two sides and everything, I'm going to have a foot um, that is going to, that the box, the, the square box is going to sit down into this kind of raised foot. And this is where we're going to pop over to, um, we're going to pop over to SketchUp. We're going to see, I'm going to see if I can draw that out so you can uh, understand what I'm referring to. So, um, let's pop over to SketchUp for a moment, and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is uh, ten and a half by six and a half. And I'm going to push pull that upward three inches. And this cube here is gonna kind of represent my box without the lid. And my wall thickness is a half inch. And so Let's imagine, if you will, that this is my box after it's all assembled and put together, right? So that's going to be the base of the box. Well, I would like the box to sit on a set of feet that's a small frame. And um, the... Uh, to illustrate that, let's move this over here and let's draw this out. I'm going to pop back over to Vetric for a minute because I have one of the foot details drawn out and we're going to redraw this so you can see how this is done. But the overall height of this is uh, just about one inch, uh, one inch in height. And um, so on this here, I'll go 10.5 comma one, enter, and it's going to also be about a half inch thick. Now on this leg, I'm going to try to draw this. I'm not great at uh, doing detail in here. I'm, I'm better in vetric drawing it in vetric and I can't import vectors in. But um, the foot Let me get my tape measure out. One and an eighth. One and an eighth. One and nine sixteenths. All 
right. So those guidelines will help me with drawing that uh, to make sure the two shapes match each other. And then I'm going to connect this together here. Now, there's no real kind of node editing um, in here. Uh, so I'm not going to try to get fancy in SketchUp. I just want to be able to draw the concept so you can understand what's going on. But um, uh, let me connect this together here so I can get rid of... this and stand by I hate when I uh, screw up my connections Let me connect this back real quick. Okay. And I'll be darned if uh, that skin. All right, wonderful. All right, let's get rid of that guideline. Let's get rid of this guideline. Let's get rid of this guideline. Now, this is not, the feet's going to look a little fancier than that, but uh, let me rotate this and stand it up on its side. Okay, so now I'm going to take my box. Let me group this together. I'm going to take my box and move it over to here. And basically, there's going to be a... Um, there's going to be a frame. So there's going to be four of these parts. And um, uh, they're going to be mitered and they're going to go around the entire bottom of the box and we're going to have some a decorative leg or foot that the box is going to sit on. It's going to be a, it's going to be attached. It'll be glued in uh, to position and everything. But this little leg part is going to be front and back, two sides. They're going to be mitered just like the box. And um, the box is going to sit down into this frame and it's going to have this leg frame. And the design that I'm going to go with uh, is this design here. So this is what the design is going to look like. Now, I'm going to cut out four of these parts. I'm going to need them to be long enough to where I can miter them as well. And they will connect together in a frame in a 10 and a half by 6 and a half area. Okay. So, um... On the next sheet, the next board, 
Uh, I'm this board is uh, going to um, hopefully it'll I'll make it long enough that I can accommodate all four pieces out of it. But um, this is going to be my I'm just going to call it a foot frame and it's going to be a half inch thick material. It is stand by just a moment. Um, it is going to, uh, I'm going to make it 12 inches long, the piece, 12 inches long. And the height is going to be a, um, a one by six. So five and a quarter. And, um, let me see if at some point at some point um, one by six actually is not five and a quarter it's five and a half so a one by four is three and a quarter but um, and a one by eight is seven and a quarter I'm sorry, one by four is three and a half, a one by six is five and a half. Then after that, a one by eight is quarters, seven and a quarter, one by 10 is nine and a quarter, one by 12 is 11 and a quarter. So it, it changes up. So this is actually going to be five and a half. Okay, and I should, since all my pieces, all my parts for those legs, they're one inch tall, there's four, I should have plenty of room to cut them out of here, out of this board. Now, I'm gonna redraw for your ed ed education, I'm gonna redraw that leg frame, uh, this part here. Uh, we're gonna create it from scratch. And so, um, I need two different sizes, right? Uh, one that when I cut the miters on the end, um, the, uh, the, when the frame is fully assembled, that the box will be able to fit in there and everything. So um, if I were to virtually uh, draw this out because I need to kind of figure it out for myself, um, I'm going to pop back over here where I have my kind of virtual box frame laid out in this top over here. We're using it for kind of a layout board right now. If I were to draw out my half inch sides, uh, they're going to be a half inch. We'll set it there for a minute. I'll get it in place because it is going to sit recessed in by a quarter of an inch. But let's get that one there. This one here. Uh, let's control C, control V, that. And I'm going to hit the number nine key on the keyboard to rotate that 90 degrees. Now, this is not uh, the layout of this. I'm leaving the miters intentionally undone so I know exactly how long I need to make these parts so I can cut the miters on them. Uh, and then, so I'm gonna hold down the control key and drag this over to here. Now, each of these parts, uh, they're, they're a half inch thick, but there's gonna be a rabbit cut on them, uh, just like I did in SketchUp over here. And let me move this uh, box now. So this rabbit right here is going to be cut in there where the box is going to be, you know, uh, sitting down in and it's going to, uh, I'm going to go 
um, a quarter inch in, so halfway in on here. And what I'd like to have on the outside of that frame, what I'd like to have is I'd like to have a nice little chamfer. I haven't decided, um, you know, uh, let me do that again. I'd like to have a nice little chamfer uh, so that, you know, on the outside, we have a nice, just a nice little decorative chamfer coming in. Um, and uh, the, um, side one is going to be cutting out the rabbit. It's going to be cutting, you know, kind of the, um, uh, probably just the rabbit on one side. And then when this board gets flipped over, it's going to cut that chamfer and it's going to cut out that, uh, decorative detail, uh, down below. And so, uh, as the profile cut, so I'd like to have a chamfer on there and everything, but this rabbit here is going to be a quarter inch wide and the depth here, I have a one inch piece. It's all going to be based on my leg. So let's go back over and let's look at my leg drawing here. Um, the depth, I have a vertical measurement of about a quarter of an inch. So quarter by quarter is what we're going to do. All right. So knowing that in my little virtual layout window over here that I'm using, if I take this and uh, slide it over to the center and I take this one, slide that to the center, Take this one, slide that, and that. That's going to be kind of a visual representation of my box sitting in this rabbit, right? So I only have a quarter of an inch of that frame, you know, on the outside. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and pull this out to here. And on this one, I'm going to pull that out to there. Okay, because when they when those ends get cut off, they get mitered. You know, it'll be there. Same thing here. I'm going to pull that up to there. Pull this one out to here. Now, I only needed to do this on two pieces just to get my what my length needs to be uh, for them. But I'm just going ahead and pulling that over on all four. All right, so post pre-miter, pre before miter, uh, my side piece needs to be seven inches long by a half inch thick, one inch tall, and my front and back pieces need to be 11 inches long, half inch thick, one inch tall. So that's going to be, and those numbers are down at the bottom right of the screen down here. As I have an object selected, it tells me what that length is. And so now I can go over to my foot frame. I could actually, you know, uh, I could, uh, you know, uh, I'll just leave those rectangles there. But um, so I need to draw a rectangle that is going to be 11 inches long and one inch tall. The material is a half inch thick. So that's going to be one. And then I need to draw one, a rectangle that is going to be seven inches long by one inch tall. And I will um, 
copy these to create the other two after I draw the design in them. So for the design, let's get this kind of in the middle of the screen so everybody can see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw a center line. And let's actually, um, let's get this part centered on here as well. I'll move it up. But I'm going to draw a center line right down the middle of these two parts. And I'm going to use guidelines to help me out. So from the left edge on the foot, the foot part, I'd like that foot, which uh, come in here. I'd like this foot right here to be about um, an inch and a half. And I believe that's what I, uh, before the, well, let's try horizontal measurement. Yeah, one and an eighth. Uh, we're gonna go one and a quarter because it gets rounded over. Uh, so on my guideline, let's come back over here. I'm going to create a parallel guide, relative guide, to the right, one and a quarter. And then I'm going to take a second guideline. And I'm going to create a relative guide to the left, negative number, one and a quarter. Okay. Now I'm also going to do the same thing up here for this foot. Because when the two miters come together, I want it to be uniform. I want it to be the same, you know, I want it to look like a, a nice uh, 90 degree leg. So on the foot, when this side gets mitered and this side gets mitered, I want it to be the same length uh, from the corner back uh, in both directions. So I want that foot. Now you probably not be able to see that small square I was just doing but um, so a relative guide positive number going to the right and now just so you know I don't need the guidelines on the right hand side I'm just putting them there because I'm actually going to draw the I'm actually going to draw the, what do you mean Vetric isn't displayed AK Woodshop? Uh, do you guys and girls see the Vetric software that I'm drawing in? Are you? Do you have that much of a delay, Woodshop, uh, from earlier where you were seeing the green screen? Let me know. Um, but the, I don't need the right side um, guidelines and all because I'm gonna only going to draw the left side and then I'm mirroring it over to create the, uh, the, the part and everything. So, um, uh, AK Woodshop, uh, if you're not seeing the Vetric, I'm not sure what's, uh, there's, there's some kind of delay there. But, um, for you so here that's why I have the center line because I'm gonna end up cutting everything on the right side of that center line and then just mirroring it over uh, but here uh, what I want to do is I'm gonna just start off with an arc tool and I'm gonna come up about you know halfway on this arc and I want to come at about a 45 degree okay uh, so you know when I'm here at 90 I want to kind of snap to about a 45 and then I just want to pull a radius um, you know the arc if you will I want to pull about a half inch um, and so the I'm going to click here and I'm going to change the radius right here to 0 0.5 and I'm going to click apply. 
Okay. And from there, I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to connect a line here straight across to this center line. Space bar to finish. And in node editing mode, let me turn the guidelines off for just a moment now that I have where my start point and everything was. In node editing mode, I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve. And I'm going to pull this center point down. I want to be just above. And I want to kind of almost like a V shape when it comes down here in the center. I want it to be kind of a V shape here. And um, the... Um, the center point let me come over here i want to add a point right here because i'd like this to kind of come down i'm going to pull this largely at a 45 degree angle i'm going to pull this up and not that far up. I can't go that far up. You got to remember, I have to. I have a quarter inch rabbit getting cut in here, so I'm going to draw that really quickly. Um, point two five. So I need some meat right here, you know, on this. Uh, so I don't want to pull up that much. I need some meat there, right? And um, I don't want to be rubbing the ground here, but I want to be just, I want to have a nice curve here. Now here, I'm going to kind of pull this down and I'm going to swing this around kind of straight up. And I'm actually going to take this arc and pull it down just a little bit so I can get more of a curve. There. And I'm actually not, I don't want it to go into this arc. You know, I don't, if I, you know, if I have this arc here, uh, let me snap the arc to the end. Well, Lainey, I'll get it here in just a minute. Um, when it comes around, I definitely don't want it sitting on the ground like this, right? Uh, so an arc isn't going to be the best choice for me here, even though that's what I started off with. I'm going to delete that arc. And I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to turn my guidelines back on and I'm going to take this here and I'm going to put this node down here and I'm going to just pull out the shape that I want. And I'm going to insert another point right here. Okay, now that I have this uh, shape here, I don't want it to come to a sharp point on this foot. This is going to be uh, rounded off. It's going to be a fillet on there, but I need to get rid of this bottom span. So I'm going to take the, let's turn the guidelines off again. I'm going to take the scissors and cut away that bottom span here. This way I can go to my fillet tool and I can add a fillet there. And it's an eighth inch. Normal fillet is what I'm putting there. So I want it rounded off like that. And then I can come in and do some, with that rounded off now and everything, I can do a little bit of 
adjusting. I'm actually happy with that. Let me I'm actually good with that. All right. Now, I want this element to kind of be replicated for here. Uh, you know, uh, just shorter, a shorter version of it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my scissors and cut away that half and everything. And um, I'm going to take this half here and I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to drag it up to here. And basically, on my center point here, I'm going to have this, uh, I'm going to keep all of this the same, but here, it's just going to, it's not going to come down to the V. So the front and the back is going to have that V shape, decorative shape, and then the back or the sides are just going to have kind of a slight arc here. So I'm going to go into node editing. Well, actually not node editing. I'll just take the scissors and cut this away. Okay. Now the end here, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to delete that span. So I'm just left with that. And over here as well, too, I'm going to delete this span. And then this, I'm going to take my scissors and trim that. So now I have the halves of my front and back and my left side. So now I can just take these two parts and there's a duplicate on this one. Let's go ahead and delete it. Make sure there's no duplicate on this one. There is. So delete that. Okay, no duplicates. Now I'm gonna go to the mirror tool and uh, I wanna create a mirrored copy and I'm gonna flip it to the right. Okay. I'm going to go into here and make sure that I have two closed vectors. I'm going to join them together with the join tool. And now that I've got those created, uh, I want to create my pocket vector that's going to create the rabbit. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. It's going to be a quarter of an inch in height. Now, I want the bit to be able to go past the edge when it's creating this rabbit and everything. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag this vector out past the edge. And by holding the shift key, it does the opposite side as well. Okay. And then I'm going to let go of the shift key and I'm just going to drag the top of this vector up because I want the bit to be able to go past that top edge to create a nice clean cut and clean off that edge. Now I'm going to hold down the control key, drag this up to here at the top. I'll pull this in about like that. I'm going to hold down the shift key, select this last, and I'm going to go to align to center, left, right. And then I'm going to use the move tool and have it moved relative. I'm going to move down negative 0.25. Not the whole thing, <laughs> just this rectangle. Negative 0.25. 
So that ensures that that's a quarter inch deep from the top of the actual part to the bottom of where that pocket's gonna be. So now that I have those two parts created, I can hold down the control key and you know create the other two parts and I could lay them out to minimize my waist you know and, and all of that stuff but um, there's not a whole lot of waste here I could put the you know two sides together um, if I you know uh, I'm, I'm happy with just laying it out like this is all I'm saying so that's going to be fine for that. Now I'm going to take all these parts and I am going to center them on the board. And because uh, I'm going to put my alignment holes in. Because I need to be able to flip this over and do a little chamfer cut on the top side. And then the um, here, this is the inside. So the miter cuts are going to get done on this end as well too. Now, I'll draw the vectors for those also and everything. So really, the other side is, uh, for this particular piece would, is just going to be for that chamfer. Um, so... I like using hand tools too, you know, so I'm thinking, do I just want to run a little chamfering plane on the top of that to chamfer it, or I can use the CNC, but let's get the miters laid out. I'll figure that one out in just a minute. Might as well, I'm flipping all the other boards and stuff, so I might as well do it on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's set up our alignment holes. Uh, we'll do that, so 0 0.25. And I'm using a quarter inch dowel for the alignment pin holes. And um, the, there and there, that'll be good. And the chamfer cuts. Now, on this part, let us let me draw a side view so you understand what's going on with the miter, not the chamfer, the miter. Um, again, I could take these parts over to a table saw, cut the miter on them uh, with a table saw sled. I could take them over to a miter saw um, with a table saw sled, sorry. Take them over to a table saw on a sled, cut the miters on them, or I could take them to a miter saw and cut the miters on them, but I want to do it on the CNC. Um, because I want to do it on the CNC. So, on this half inch board, let's come here. It must be boring the audience behind me. They're, they're yawning. Um, all right, so let's uh, come in here and draw a 45 degree why am I not snapping? I got my smart snapping on. Interesting. Not sure why my smart snapping wasn't snapping properly. To do a miter cut on a half inch piece, the distance from the end of the board into the short side of the miter, if you will, should be a half an inch. Three quarters, three quarters of an inch and that kind of thing. And to validate that, um, we'll take a horizontal measurement uh, from here to here. And my numbers are so big, hold on a second. And we should be at a half inch. Right, so half inch over, half inch deep, and everything. On here, I'm going to have, I'm gonna be using a 90 degree V-bit, so we'll draw that out. And I'm 
let me be realistic here. Okay, so let's pretend that this is my bit here. That bit is going to be uh, taking passes. And in my case, um, we're going to go uh, about an eighth um, inch deep. I'm sorry about a quarter inch deep um, and so technically you know two passes I should be able to get through this uh, we might do it in three cuts but um, should be able to do it in two passes and everything so the right side of the bit so my 90 degree V bit has a half inch head on it and everything and um, if I have a line let me draw a line here and let me get rid of that if I move that line to the right to the left, <laughs> negative, uh, 0 0.25 here. And let's say that that's where the center of my bit was coming down and everything. Um, my pass depth I should be able to do this miter cut in two passes, but I, I I can also be conservative and do it in eighth inch passes. You know, I just have to be mindful of what my bit looks like, you know, um, when, you know, where it needs to be uh, to do that eighth inch, eighth inch, you know, so on and so forth. Because ultimately it's gonna be cutting all the way down. Now, the great thing about this is, is Vetric has a new tool called the Chamfer Tool. And the Chamfer Tool will figure all of this out for me uh, and everything uh, based on what it is I want to do. So with these parts here, all I have to do is select the vector um, that I need, to, my end vector, and it just needs to be a single line. I can't have the whole thing selected because it'll want to do a chamfer around all the pieces. So all I have to do is draw a single line down the right edge of my part, and I'll do this for all. And then, same thing down the left edge. And I'm hitting spacebar to finish the line after I draw each line. Um, I'm hitting the spacebar for each line. Now I'm gonna select the right side first here and in the chamfer tool when the chamfer tool opens up you're going to get these arrows here now the arrow head points to the deepest part of the cut and the line the end of the line points or is where the cut starts right so 
yes, I want the deepest part of the cut to be my line, but I need those lines to be flipped to the inside. So they're going to be going in this fashion. We're going to be starting in here, you know, a half inch in. We're going to be cutting down, you know, so our cut depth is going to be a half inch. So 0 0.5, okay? So a half inch over, a half inch deep, and we're starting in here, chamfering into here, okay? So the, um, for each of those four legs, that's gonna be the chamfer cut, okay? So uh, it's, it's already kind of figuring out, uh, you know, what based on the bit that I'm using and the past depth and everything, it'll figure out how many cuts it needs to take to cut that deep. And um, if I didn't have the chamfer tool path, if you're in an older software and everything, you just need to create your two vector lines and the bit's going to be cutting on, you know, down a quarter of an inch on one line and then down another quarter of an inch to, you know, starting at a quarter, cutting a quarter. Uh, but it's gonna, um, don't start it, I'm sorry, start at zero, cut down a half inch for the second line. But it's gonna do it in two cuts. Um, here, it might do it in three passes because my tool is technically set to a 0 0.2 depth. But um, the chamfer tool path is gonna take care of that. Now, the right side if I came over here and I held down the shift key and I selected this vector here, I'm on the wrong side of the line on here. Unless I change my start point on my vector. So right now I drew all of these lines from the top to the bottom, right? So if I come in here and let me close this tool for a minute. On that vector, if I go into node editing mode, if I change the start point to down here for each of these vectors, if I make the bottom the start point, then I can select each of those vectors all on all sides and with my chamfer setting I want to be outside sloping upward it will cut on the right correct side and I want to be going a half inch deep 0 0.5 with that 90 degree V bit so by changing the start point, it changes that direction for that left side, so it cuts that chamfer properly. Okay, so my start points on the right side there, the, the lines that I drew, the vector lines that are selected, the start points are at the top for each of these on the right, and they're at the bottom for each of these on the left. So that way I'm starting on the inside of that cut, cutting down. So if we were to calculate this tool path and everything, the wait for it those miter cuts will occur and let me turn the black color off those miter cuts will occur there And the pocket cuts, let's do them next. Or first, next, last, it doesn't matter. But uh, they need to get done. These are going to be pocket cuts cutting a quarter of an inch deep with a quarter inch end mill.
that's going to create those rabbits. And then the profile cut for these parts. Now I, I still have to figure out if I want to do the chamfer on the other side. If so, I'm not going to cut these parts out here. I'll cut them out on the other side. But just for preview purposes for the moment, uh, the profile cut is going to be cutting all the way through the material uh, with a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. And I would add tabs. Uh, I'll probably add a tab, uh, you know, somewhere but right now for preview purposes I'm not going to add tabs so that way I can cut those parts out and if I get rid of the waste All right, not enough space between my parts, as you can see. So let's fix that right now. My quarter inch bit couldn't fit in there. So this part is gonna get moved down. This part's gonna get moved up. And we're gonna recalculate all the tool paths. So recalculate all. Oh, hold on a second. Stand by. Don't hit recalculate all when you have old tool paths from earlier. Stand by just a moment. All right, let's try that one more time. Recalculate the visible tool pass. All right, let's preview that one more time. All right, and what we have are those four frame pieces that will get uh, glued together. And um, it'll create those front and back legs. Okay, now I think it would look just kind of plain if I don't, if I don't add some kind of, you know, decorative chamfer or something i don't know um i can't really go too far i think i'm gonna just leave it as is uh because of that miter and then i'll i'll figure out if i want to add something to the edge detail i'll do it by hand uh, i might just want to break that edge a little bit um maybe with some sanding or what have you but that's going to be the four frame pieces for the box to sit in that's going to be the feet and everything you know so that's going to be the four frame parts and if i wanted to get fancy i could do some ornate scroll work in here with vectors and have it carve uh, to give me some de okay all right so if i decide that uh that it calls for something a little more ornate and little V carving of some sort, little scroll work or something in here. I'll draw those vectors and I'll do that later. All 
Okay. So we're buffering right now. All right. Are y'all still with me? Give me a thumbs up if you're still with me because uh, on my screen, my little preview screen buffered. So I, I think that means y'all buffered as well. Okay. So now we can focus on the detail on the fronts, the backs, uh, you know, the left, right and everything. I don't need, let's go into this top view here. Now that I have this frame worked out, I've got my sides and everything, uh, you know, uh, worked out. I do not need any of this here any longer. So I can get rid of that. And... These vectors here, we're going to be, I'm going to be using, but I don't need this leg assembly anymore or this leg detail any longer. All right. Now my side pieces. So for the side pieces, Hey, thanks, Troy. Um, I want highly detailed. I want this to be as patriotic as I possibly can make it. So I'm going to start off with a rectangle to create a border around the perimeter of my box. And then I'm going to offset that. Uh, you have to remember that the bottom of my box is going to be sitting down into this frame by a quarter of an inch. By a quarter of an inch. So whatever detail that I do in here, I don't want it being covered up by being sitting down in that frame. So I'm going to go ahead and offset this box inward. And I'm going to go 0.3. And that's going to kind of be my buffer on the top and bottom. Now my sides are getting miter. Remember, this is this board right here is uh, the, the white board is 12 inches long. My parts only 10 and a half, right? And then of that 10 and a half, it's half inch thick. There's a half inch miter on each side, right? So, um, the on the size of this object here, I'm going to go ahead and make it the 10 and a half. I'm going to unlink the X and Y. I'm going to make it the 10 and a half uh, that it is uh, going to be. The bottom is going to represent my quarter inch cushion for when it's sitting in this lip. So whatever I design and everything needs to be in here. Uh, and I'm going to um, hold down the control key and the shift key, and I'm going to drag a box into the side here. And um, let me try that again. Control and shift. I'm going to drag in uh, a box here and if I, I don't think I'm that good to where I could automatically eyeball a half inch, but let me see uh, what I did here. Let me go up to view guidelines, delete all guides. Let me bring another guideline up here and create a parallel guide a half inch over 0 0.5. Okay. And so on this box, I'm going to hold down the shift key, cutting everything, but I don't want, you know, 
have a carving over here on the edge and then when that miter cuts it cuts through right you know because my carving is deep or something like that whatever the case may be um so that's my kind of half inch cushion so as long as my drawings kind of stay within this box here my detail or design like to have on so um the, they're going to be five-pointed stars. Third. We'll see what, what's what. All right, so hopefully, I, I don't know if the buffering skips anything or if it picks up where it left off. I'm not sure because uh, like I'm not watching. Uh, I'm just seeing the preview buffer. Okay. The eagle that I had chose for this project um is this guy right here let me grab him let me group him together and um this eagle here is what i'd like to have in the center of this patriotic box and he's going to be small He's not going to be that big. He's got to be smaller. So I'm going to need a 22 degree V bit. Uh, a very fine detail bit. 11 degree half angle, 22 degree full angle, you know, included angle. Uh, to really get into the detail of this and everything. So, um, and again, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the buffering. I don't know what to do about it, but the... Uh, for this eagle, I'm going to select him. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this vector. And I'm going to center him inside that vector. So select, hold down the shift key, select this vector here. Isn't that funny? Make sure I have another tools open or something. <laughs> Let me move, make sure he's on sheet, the front sheet. Move to sheet. He is on the front. Why is the shift key not working? Shift. That's interesting. There we go. Doesn't know what all that was about, but um, I'm gonna get him centered there. And now that he's centered, I'm gonna hold down the shift key again. And I'm gonna size him down. And I'm gonna move him up. And I'm going to create kind of a name box or something here that he'll be kind of sitting on. Because I might want, I don't know. I don't know. I might want to um, put a name or something or USA I don't know uh, so but I'm still gonna put a box in here and on this box I want the feathers and everything to be in front of that to be, you know, to where um, everything is kind of linked together, you know, to where the box and everything, you know, the wings get carved into it. So um, doing a and 
and I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim away this, uh, but I have to ungroup the eagle first. So let's ungroup him. I'm going to use the scissors and I'm going to trim away this outside line here. And this horizontal line all the way across. And I can just select that and hit delete. And that's going to kind of connect so that the wings will carve in the front there. I'm going to do the same thing here. And this time all I need to do is trim this and that. Let's try that again. Okay. So when it wants to remove everything, uh, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to make sure that node is just overlapping that line so that it knows that I want to trim to there and it'll reconnect those lines when I close that tool. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing here. And again, if it wants to hit control Z, if it wants to get rid of everything, go into node editing. I'm hitting the letter N on the keyboard, pull this vector just slightly over, trim, close the tool and it'll close that off. And then that remaining vector can get deleted. Okay, here I'm gonna keep the uh, my straight line and so I'm just gonna connect it to this part. So that connects there, um, this connects. On this end, I actually want this to come down and connect down here. So I'm gonna go into node editing And I'm going to pull this. All that's going to get deleted. But I just want to pull that to there. So I can cut up to here. And I can delete that little piece. All right, so now, before I started trimming and all that stuff and everything, it would have been smart of me to make sure that my box was the same size and it was centered and all of that stuff, right? Um, uh, this gem is going to be a V-bit. Um, before I, you know, went hacking away on it, but I didn't, right? So I know that my, um, I know that my eagle's centered. So I'm just gonna take a line because um, I'm a goofball, and I'm gonna find the center. of my box here and I'm going to draw a line straight down. I'm going to take a measurement from that center line. And I'm going to measure from that line to this edge here. 0 0.2024. I'm going to measure from here to here. 0.18 seven six seven six right so I need to go into node editing mode and I'm gonna grab these two nodes now point one eight seven six is actually good I'm, I'll, I'll leave that one over here I'll do this one so I'm gonna grab these two nodes right here now I'm going to move those nodes inward 
ever so slightly. I'm keeping my left mouse button held down. And I'm going to type in 2.024 minus 1.876 equals. And let's see if it does it. I don't think it did it properly, but let's find out. No, it did not. And let's try that again. One more time. Now, actually, let me just do this. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing I just did, but I'm going to I I'm going to I want to know the numbers ahead of time. So, rather than popping up a calculator or anything, uh, I'm just going to open any one of these tools that has a calculation box in it, and I'm going to type in 2.024 minus 1.876 equals, and the answer is 0.148. Okay, one, four, eight. So I'm gonna hit close. So I'm gonna go back into node editing. I'm gonna grab these two. I'm gonna drag this to the right. I'm gonna type in 0 0.148 and hit enter. It'll move back that distance. And now I should be able to measure and it should say 1.8 seven six okay cool every once in a while since it would not let me do the math on the fly right there while moving the nodes I just opened up a tool did the math in the box because there's their little calculators all those boxes where you can type in the values in the software anywhere you can type in a value in the program it's like a little calculator you can add subtract multiply divide so I just did the math real quick. 2.024 minus 1.876 equals 0.148. Now I can grab those nodes, move them, keep that left mouse button held down, type in that 0 0.148 and hit enter, and it'll move it that distance, whatever direction I pulled them. And um, that's that, right? Cool. So now I can delete that line. I don't need it anymore. Now I can get back to what I wanted to do. I want four stars here, okay? So I want um, to have one star slightly low, one star slightly high, right about there, and let's... That would have been great if I would have held the control key down. Go slightly high. Right about there. I am good with that. I'm going to take those two and I'm going to mirror them, creating a mirror copy, flipping about job center, flipping them horizontally to the other side here. Okay, okie dokie, okie dokie. All right, now, this eagle, when it carves, when this eagle carves, um, I'll show you what it looks like. We'll do a V-carve toolpath. I'm going to limit the cut to a sixteenth of an inch for right now. I'm going to use that 22 degree V bit I was talking about earlier. And I'll use an eighth inch end mill. I'm going to calculate this cut. And everything. And when we look at this eagle, this eagle's really sharp. Okay. Very nice. Now, 
I want this eagle to be raised. Now the letters, whatever text I put in here is going to be raised. That's why I don't. That's why I don't have you know. Uh, I don't have anything in there right now. But whatever thing to be carved around the star is is I'm about to. Uh, I, I want to carve everything down. And when I do that, um, it's going. Whatever's carved down here is going to be you know reversed uh, on this eagle. Whatever the you know is carved down, it's going to look ugly because I'm about to. remove all this material around it and so in order for it to have the same look that I that it has in this preview that you just saw I need to create a little island okay so the outside vector The outside vector we lost data standby but I had to kind of restart my uh, streamer we'll see what happens it should kick back in in just a moment okay we should be back in just a moment all right now what I'm trying to tell you is I'm gonna have I want the stars to be raised up I want the eagle to be raised up I want to carve everything around that area I want to have all that area carved away uh, and in order to do that, I have to select a boundary vector. In this case, it's going to be this inner rectangle that I'm going to be selecting. Now, because of that, if I add that additional line to my carving, then what my eagle looked like, what you saw in the preview, that's going to uh, be reversed unless I add a new line to the eagle. So I'm going to select this outside boundary vector of the eagle here and inside here as well too. And I'm going to create an offset and I'm going to go outward and I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch. Now I'm not worried about that vector and everything up here going past my box because all this is good space to carve in. I can carve in up here, no problem. Uh, but um, I need uh, a 16th of an inch is too much. It's too much, it's too big of an island. So I'm gonna go a 32nd, I'm gonna cut that in half. So Control Z to undo. We're going to come out here and um, I'm going to go a 32nd. Okay. All right. All right. Now. When I select all of these vectors here, and I come in and create a V carve toolpath, I need to set a flat depth, how deep I want this to go. Now remember, my sides are a half inch thick. Um, I can, you know, go as deep as I want. I'm just going to go a 16th of an inch. I just want a little bit of lift, a little bit of detail. 0.08 at the most kind of thing. So 
Um, I'm just going to go a sixteenth of an inch with my 22 degree V-bit and an eighth inch end mill. I could also use a sixteenth inch end mill to get in here because this is a small detailed box, so small bits, right? Uh, we don't need to go crazy with the big bits on this one and everything. And um, I, uh, I, I am going to add my sixteenth inch end mill. If you don't have one, Amazon Speed Tool 16th inch end mill is great. No complaints with it. And on the 16th inch end mill, it's going to be doing rest machining. It can take a uh, full 16th of an inch pass. And because uh, the 8th inch end mill is going to remove most of the material. And I want to make sure that I'm raster cutting this. I want to cut with the grain. I don't want to. I don't want a bunch of swirl marks and what have you. I mean, uh, I don't want to see tool marks at all. I don't care how trimmed my system is. If I do an offset, I'll get tool marks. I want to cut with the grain and everything. And when I calculate this um, tool path. This is going to give me that raised look that I want uh, for this front. We'll get rid of the color in just a minute. Okay. That's going to give me this raised look. Let me turn this off. You can see that here and everything. Now, the box, again, is hollow right now because there's no text in it. If I decide that I'm not going to put any text in there or anything like that, then I'm going to end up getting rid of that box and making my eagle bigger so it's the centerpiece of the front here. Okay, that box is there for me to put a name. Like if I was making this for someone, I could put a name in there. And the name is going to be raised. So let me, just for visual purposes, let me go ahead and throw a name in here or a word or something and um, see what I mean. Um, it could be a name, it could be a word, it could be a phrase, it could be whatever the case may be. Now, I'm going to, uh, in the text box, um, I'm going to just go in here and I'm going to use a font uh, that I have um, called American Scribe. I want this box to have kind of a bit of a colonial feel, I guess. I'm not sure, but um, um, you know, and. The the P here is going to carve beyond the box right here, and I am not mad at it. But what I do want to do is I want the box to be part of the letter P. Um, in this case, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this font together. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center it. So I'm going to align left to right, make sure I'm centered in that box. And then the all this area is going to get carved away and everything. So um, what I'd like to have is I'd like this to be raised up 
and I'd like it to go through this box here um, like it's almost overlapping it. So I'm going to take this uh, text real quick and I'm going to weld it together. Okay, this gets rid of all the overlaps and everything. And this American scribe text is found on defont.com. But um, here, I'm going to select this vector right here and I'm going to offset it outward uh, 32nd of an inch. Uh, that's a little big. Let's go. it outward here and I'm actually just using this vector that vector is going to get deleted but I'm actually just using this vector to trim this box so that the P kind of goes through it here and the inside of that goes away too. All right, so just so that P comes out here. All right, now, I'm not one that always, you know, oh, let's just fill in as much space as we can and blah, 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 you know, and, and uh, you know, try to not have any, um, not have any, uh, you know, try not to have any dead space or anything like that. And so, um, what, uh, what I will do is I'm going to try to find a, something that I would think would look good there that would that that's fitting uh if you will uh that i think <laughs> that i think would be fitting might not be but um let me stand by one moment All right, let's import an image. I'm going to trace that image. Bitmap fading turned off first for me. Uh, this gets slid up to 75. Default corner fit, I'm gonna turn the noise filter up to four. Preview, apply and close. Okay. And ungroup, get rid of this circle. This is going to be sized down quite a bit. I don't know if this is the right look for this I don't think that's the right look I want something uh, stand by one moment 
I want something I thought that was going to have kind of a bit of a colonial feel to it or not. It doesn't at all. Um, how much room do I have? Okay, let's try one more. Bear with me just a second. My mouse is screwing up. All right, let's get rid of that. That that was not the right look. That one, that was not the right look. Let's go. Trace 75. Bitmap fading off, noise filter on, preview, apply, close. Size this down. All right, I'm going to take that object and mirror it over to the other side. Flip about job center, flip horizontally. And again, not always one that, you know, oh, you got to fill in every bit of space. You know, um, just do what you can. And all. All right, one more time. Let's open up this tool path. We're going to come in here and we're going to uh, select um, everything again. Calculate. Now, I'm going to be using a uh, texturing pattern um, on all the sides and everything in here. Let me see what we got. Let me look at my resolution. All right, so the little flourishes are gonna be kind of a no-go for me. Uh, I'll leave them in there now, but I'm, I'm going to try to find something better. But that's where we're going to be right here. Now, I don't want just a want just a smooth background here. I'm going to add some texture to this, and this is going to be the last thing that we're going to do. Um, we're going to add the texture and then this will be that this will conclude, you know, kind of part one. We're going to start wrapping it up. Uh, and this is going to be a project where uh, I, I want to take my time. I don't want to rush the design 
because everything there's going to be just no matter where you look at on this box there's going to be something right and i may even still instead of doing a texture in here on the front i may even still do something really abstract abstract or something i don't know i'll have some time to think about it over the break but um this is where we're going to uh start but let's um let's get a texture in here now for the texture i don't need anything on the eagle selected i just need the boundary the stars the outside vector of let's try that again Okay. Let me look at something here real quick. Okay. So I got a problem with my vectors really quickly. Let me fix this. This, um, No, maybe it's right. It's the way I drew it. Yeah, that's the island. All right. Um, For the texture pattern, I need to have the outside vector selected, the stars selected. I need this outside boundary. I also need this to inside right here. And uh, if with this outside boundary selected right here, my texture is going to want to try to carve in the middle of these two lines. We can't have that. Um, so I need to add another vector outline around this eagle, but only just a few thousandths of an inch that's going to be my vector because this can't be selected. So let's come in here and I'm going to create an offset outward and I'm just going to go, you know, ten thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to hold down the, I'm going to turn off that outside vector and I'll be damned if it didn't create another line on the inside. I don't know what's going on with the... All right, we can't have that. So let's undo this. Let me see here. Control-Y to redo that. That should be coming around. Right here is why, because uh, I cut off that uh, P, so let me offset this outward. I was wondering where um, that was happening, so I want to go into here, and I'm going to use my scissors to trim away this vector here and here. Um, I'm going to trim away this I need this outside boundary here um, I'll fix those nodes in just a minute I need this outside boundary now I need this line to travel all the way around the outside and connect to itself which it does now I need I can't have it going over this line right here so I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm just going to shift these nodes upward. Okay. I don't care 
I just need them to be there. Now, all the other vectors that were created, I'm going to select and hit delete. So this vector there. And this inside vector, can get deleted on this side. That's my original. All right, good. So, man, that was a screw up. Okay, um, I need just one single outline going around this eagle in this box. I need to have that selected. I need to have the stars selected. Yes, Darwin, I'll save. I'll definitely save after this. I need to have this selected and I need to have the boundary selected. And I am going to go ahead and hit save. Now that Darwin's brought that to my attention. Thank you, sir. Um, and I'm going to open up the texturing toolpath. Now that texturing toolpath, my bit that I'm going to be using, I want a small tip bit. So I'm going to use a 16th inch tapered ball nose. And I want uh, that bit to start at the depth of my pocket, which is a 16th of an inch. That's how deep that pocket is. And on my cut depth here, I'm going to allow it to cut another 16th of an inch deep. And it's going to vary between that and just a little over a 32nd. So my, my cut depth is going to vary between those two randomly. My cut length, uh, since this is kind of a small area, I'll just go a half inch. And between a half inch and a quarter, I'll let it vary. Overlap, I'll let it overlap about 30%. That's fine. Now the step over, I generally step over half the diameter of the bit. Now my bit is a 16th of an inch tapered ball nose. So that means that the, di uh, the radius of that, half of that, is a 32nd. And when this cuts, I want a random pattern at a random angle. So I want to go about, um, I'll go 15 degrees. Now, I do not want my ball nose bit hitting my border. I don't want it hitting the stars, the eagle, all of that stuff. And I do want a texture to be inside of this area here as well. So I'll make sure those vectors are selected also. Uh, but I, I want to keep them away. So uh, I'm going to go have them stay away about a sixteenth of an inch in this case. And uh, I'm going to click Calculate. Now, when that calculates, it's not going to put any texture down underneath my box. You know, where that box is and everything. Um, and a sixteenth of an inch, looking at my blue lines, a sixteenth of an inch is far way away. So I'm actually going to recalculate that, and I'm going to get a little closer. Just a little bit closer. So I'm going to open that back up, and I'm going to cut that in half. Now, I'm going to preview that toolpath, and I'll see what's going on right here. Uh, it looks odd right at the moment, but I'm going to preview that visible toolpath and see if it's just the way my software looks. I really wish I wasn't buffering and you could see this. But this is what the front of the box, this is how we're going to end. This is what the front of the box is going to look like.
And I'm going to sit back for a minute, let the computer catch up to itself. Let me know when you can see the texture. Because uh, what I'm saying now, you guys and girls won't hear or see for about two or three minutes. Wow, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I'm back on now. All right, we should be, I should be back. Sorry about that. I got cut off for a minute. Um, we went black screen for a moment. Uh, okay, so... Long story short, uh, we used a eighth inch end mill and a sixteenth inch end mill to do the flat work. We used a twenty two degree V bit to do the V carve work, and we used a sixteenth inch tapered ball nose to do the texture. Now, this texture pattern or this texture theme is going to continue around on all four sides. No, it was me that got cut off, not you. Um, I shut my uh, transmitter off and restarted it the uh, so we are um, we are going to uh, continue that sixteenth of an inch pattern all the way around and everything um, I still I think something needs to be done with the we the people section I don't like uh, I'm not happy with that flourish and I think uh, it needs it probably needs to be carved in instead of raised up I don't know uh, but I'll I'll think on that a little bit now this part you know on the uh, this is the vector um, uh, that's not the vector. If I flip over to the other side here, and we'll just create the miter so you can see what's going on here. Um, the part itself is 10 and a half inches wide. It's three inches tall. And uh, the miters, we're going to draw our line again. We're going to draw a line here to here on this side. Space bar to finish. And we're going to draw a line this time from the bottom up on this side. So that way the start point is at the bottom. And we're going to select those two vectors. And we're going to use the chamfer tool path. And again, it's a half inch side, so everything is still kind of defaulted from a moment ago. So everything is good there. And uh, we're going to calculate that tool path. And that vector, um, I don't need the bit, you know, running across the two edges and everything. Um, I'm going to be, by the way, uh, I'm going to be holding this down. We haven't done the flip or any of that stuff. We'll deal with that. But um, uh, I'm not... 
I can use clamps here on the outside. I just need to make sure there's nothing on the top and bottom. But if we did a profile cut, cutting this part out, what we would end up with I get rid of the waste we'll end up with this part here this will be our front piece okay this will be our front piece so that's the front of our box okay And to give you an idea of my thoughts and all, these eagles here are going to be my eagles on my side, on the side. Now they're either going to be, um, they're either going to be kind of like a back to back type theme or something, or they're going to be, you know, one end, the other with something in the middle. But there's going to be, they're going to be on both sides. They're going to kind of be like, think of, um, think of kind of on the sides, uh, the front side and the back side on the sides and all. They're going to be there. And uh, so when you're looking at this from the side, and there's going to be something in the middle. I don't know what it is. Now there's also, I was thinking about uh, on the corners of the box, like some type of colonial columns uh, in things. And um, I'll see where, you know, where we go again. This is going to be a project. I really want to do this one right because I want this to be something that, you know, uh, I can give you guys and girls, but also I can sell it, you know. And, uh, you know, I'd like this box to sell for over a hundred and something dollars. Uh, so I really want to take my time with it. And um, the detail, uh, I, um, I want this to be a patriotic box. Now, just to so you know what uh, what the top is going to look like, uh, we'll go ahead and import that model in. And This model I'm going to provide to you all too, all as well. We'll see uh, what I'm going to do with that. But um, this is going to be 10.5. Actually, it's going to be 10. It's going to be five eighths of an inch thick. That 
Thank you, Kool-Aid. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for letting me know. Ronnie, thanks for letting me know. Okay, let me close this. So the top is going to have this model here. And the top is going to be wavy like that. It's going to have a, it's going to be flat so it can close flat. It's going to be wavy like this, but there's going to be a kind of a border around it. So I've got to build that in yet. Uh, there's going to be a border around it. And then um, it'll be kind of, you know, like a frame almost and everything. And so, uh, but this is going to be the lid of the box. This is going to be the top of the box and everything. So that will be the top. Now, if y'all like this model and y'all want to buy it, it's available at builditv.com under the flags category of the shop menu, right? But uh, if, uh, you know, I'll see what I'm going to do about as far as including it with this project. Uh, if anything, you know, now I believe this model is $15 on my website. Uh, if anything, I might make it available to be with part of this project for a $2 download or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but that uh, is going to be the top of the lid. So we'll design that. We'll decorate that because the other side of the lid there's going to be hinge pockets for the hinges that we're going to have to put in and, um, and all that good stuff and everything. So we are going to leave this uh, here uh, at this stage. We've got one part done. <laughs> uh, well, we got the, the frame done too. So we got the frame done. We got the front laid out. I think I'm uh, content with the front. Uh, I'm happy with that. This will be the top. We still got to put it in its frame, size it and position it right and everything and blend everything together. So we'll be working that. Um, and then we'll be figuring out the sides in the back. Again, these eagles here are going to be in the sides. Now these are really uh, nice looking eagles. Uh, let's take one just really quickly and... Let's move it to the left side for a moment. And let's center it. And again, it's gonna be sized down. Uh, it, you know, it's gonna be inward where the miter is not gonna be and all of that stuff but when this carves it's going to it's going to be raised again just like um just like uh the front it's going to have that raise but I'm just going to carve this real quick um just to show what it looks like as a V curve Because of the detail and because of the size, it's going to be a 22 degree V bit. Um, that uh, it's going to be a 22 degree V bit that's used to carve this. And when this has some color added to it, um, I want this box. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I want it to be patriotic, but I kind of almost want to have like a colonial theme, if you will. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but um, <laughs> you need a deep breath. Of yeah, I'll work on that one. <laughs> I'll work on that one, Kool-Aid. But um, uh, the, this eagle, the vector is a really old feel to it. And... Um, it's one of my favorites. And uh, 
the sides, there's going to be two of the, I don't know what. Said, no matter if you pick this box up and you're looking at it from every angle except for the bottom, the bottom's not going to have much on there. Um, but uh, the bottom, I might laser engrave, you know, uh, the Constitution or something on there. I'm not sure. But um, everywhere you look on this box, I want it to have a a wow fact like oh oh that's cool that's cool so i really want there's there's right now it's still plain even with that eagle with the four stars it's very plain even with the texture i want like little things that i just, i don't want it to be too busy 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 but i want it to be like oh that's cool wow i can't believe that that you know the detail on that or whatever i want it to have a little bit of a wow factor and um uh, I want to, uh, take this project over like, dang, that's nice. That's one of the nicest projects you've done kind of deal. And that's what my goal is. Uh, so, um, we will wrap this up. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever you and your family celebrate. Uh, if you do, um, uh, whatever holiday uh, this time of year that your you your your family celebrate, um, my my family and uh, all of us at Digital Woodcarver we celebrate Christmas and New Year. So happy, you know, uh, we say Merry Christmas. And um, with that, be safe. Drink lots of spiked eggnog. <laughs> Drive careful. Um, but we're gonna wrap it up here. And we're going to um, we're going to continue this in another class. <clears throat>